episode number 292. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Charles. Hello. Hey there, man. How are you doing? Good, good. So, your first time here, right? Yep, first time. So, excited, feeling like you're hyped right now, or just like, uh, this is just another Saturday? Nah, uh, I'm quite hyped as well, because this, this news we're going to be talking about today, they are really news to me, and I just... And I have things to say. Alright, good. Put it mildly. Alright, alright. Before we officially start into the news, I got to ask you the four important questions. Uh, These questions are for the new upper people or people who haven't come in a long while. So, question number one is favorite character? Twilight Sparkle. Wow, that's fast. Uh, why? Uh, when I first know about her, she just reminds me of two of my favorite literary characters, which, is, which are. Harry Potter and Hermione Granger. To me, it's Twilight Sparkle is the two of them in one package. Really now? That's how I feel. Okay, okay. I'm not doubting you. I'm not doubting you. I can see it with the chosen one. And I can see with the book smart thing. Yep, yep, yep. I can see it. I can see it. And favorite episode? I forgot the title name, but uh, it's the episode where she became a princess. What's the, what's the type episode called again? Oof, that one, season 3, Magical Mystery Cure. Ah, uh, yeah, that one. Wait, that is your favorite episode? Yes, I know. Explain, but because there's a lot of people who say that they hate that episode. So, why did you like it? I always had this habit of not liking stuff that a lot of people like and vice versa, so, yeah. Alright, well, no, but uh, uh, any other reason than that? The, the very idea that she's going from uh, Unicorn to Alicorn. That's the main draw for me. It's simple as that. Huh, really now? Yes. It's like, how do I put it? I feel she earned that. Like, to become a princess is, in gaming terms, she has a well-deserved level up. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. From what my views, is like, I kind of okay with the episode. Uh, it was a bit too short and felt rushed, but you like it? Uh, how do you think about what? What do you think about the songs? Oh yeah, I like the songs. Though. There is one song that I really like, but there don't seem to be any extended version of it. You know that choir chorus thing where oh. she first walk in there. I really like that particular part, but there just don't seem to be any expansion on that. Mm, okay, okay, that one. I, I don't think it was in the. Uh, album? Was it? I, I don't think so, right? No, it's, it's not an album. Alright, alright. Yeah, it's not the album that I'm aware of. Yeah, same here. But anywho, uh, that is a very interesting answer. Now, third one is, how did you become a fan of the show? Curiosity, I, when I was, there's this one time where I was just on the internet and then I see a lot, this forum discussion about why adults or just non-children <laughs> like this show for little girl. I just got curious. I mean, like, that's a good question. Why are the, why are the non-target audience like this show? And so I just give it a try. The first two episodes, okay. The rest is history, as they say. I will, I will be following. Although that happened was around third season because it first started. That was around where the fans are being are freaking out about. Twilight being an Alicorn, and from that I just go, what are they talking about? <laughs> then from that, go to the forum where people are discussing about adults watching this girl show. Then, yeah. All right, so all right. I actually got in fairly late. Oh, all right, all right. Season 3 Ender guy then. Like, you're kind of the season 4 guy too. Yeah. All right, all right. And what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? They have no idea I watched the show, although they do know that I have plushies from the show because they are too difficult to hide. But yeah, they only know my son is collecting dolls from a cartoon show. <laughs> I think that's basically, that's, that's as far as their knowledge goes. They have no idea what the show is about and they have no idea why I collect, what I collect. Alright, right. Seems about right. What about your friends then? Yeah, as long as they're not being too pushy or forcing them to watch it. And yeah, it's, it's kind of like, you let me like what I like, I let you like what I like. If you want to give it a try, I will be there. If you don't want to give it a try, that's fine with me. That's a good way to look at it. And thank you for answering those four important questions. And now let's head into the news. So we start off with Nick Conflone. He was a writer for the show. Uh, I don't think he did anything for... 
Well, I think he did only one episode for season 7 and that's about it. And a lot of people were wondering if he'll come back for season 8. And you know what? He is. Like, uh, he'll be writing a few episodes for season 8. So, that's gonna be cool. Yeah, that's all from his Twitter, right? I mean, he, he, we got, we know about this news from his Twitter and, yeah, considering that Equestra Daily said he's one of the big reasons so many fell for Starlight. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering what what else can still be done by Starlight. Maybe he, he he might be one of the major force behind Starlight's character, and this is something that might sound biased on my part, but I'm worried that he will be a major contributor in Starlight replacing Twilight. Nah, I doubt that because the episode that people were saying that they fell in love with Starlight is Rock Solid Friendship. That is a season 7 episode. If they're saying episodes that he was not involved with, um, let's see. There's Dungeon and Discord, The Saddle Review, No Second Princess. I wonder if No Second Princess is like... Okay, No Second Princess is one of them, but it's mostly the resurrection of the Trixies. And Heart Breakers, Heartbreakers, that was what now, season 5 episode, oh yeah, the Hearts and Hoof Day where Apple meets the pies and stuff, yeah, but now, honestly, I think the only reason why people like him or people relate to him with Starlight is just because of the two episodes that feature her that he wrote, which is Rock Solid Friendship and No Second Princess. No Second Princess was because her interaction with Trixie and everybody likes the Trixie. And I think with Rock Solid Friendship, it's mod and it's an interesting team up. And I think with how this is going, I kind of like the idea of how he's pushing other characters to be more of, to be more in the limelight. Yeah, I, I see your point. I see your point. So we already have six seasons focusing on the main six, so maybe it's time to line line four on someone else around them. Is that what I'm saying? Not that too. I mean, it's nice to have more variety. We, it's nice to know more other characters from the one we already know. Because we have what? We have been running for seven seasons now, and we kind of know the main six and all their problems. It'll be nice to see a new, fresh angle same problem, but fresh characters and see how they deal with it. Oh well, yeah, that is true. And at least the lessons that Twilight learned from the past can be applied here again. And it doesn't really feel like it's... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rehash? Yes, thank you. So at least you'll got that. And hey, uh, Nikon Flon might write two or three episodes, probably, but I can't wait. True. And, well, there are a few things I'm looking forward to in terms of Starlight's character, and I wouldn't mind seeing more of her as a quest girl. Ah, uh, yes, that is... Well, that one is going to be up to the people who are doing quest struggles. Uh, we got no idea who they are, and from what I know, there's uh, promise, they're promising 40 YouTube shorts. So, yeah, just have to wait on that one to appear. Yeah, I've seen a few of those shots. Yeah, they're, they're fun, they're fun. Who mm. knew that Fluttershy was a really hardcore gamer? <laughs> In the revenge. Yep, yep. Oh, wow. Uh, but anywho, on to other people having good work with ponies. And it seems that a comic book owner is citing ponies for the reason he's still in business. So, yay! So, you, you and I know that in this day and age of comic books and online viewing of the comic books, it's a bit difficult. Or it's a bit, well, comic book shop owners or bookstore owners are having a hard time with, well, getting more customers because I can just sit at home and look at the comics. Or I don't want to collect a stack of comic books and leave them around and stuff. And because of that, comic book store owners are having trouble with, well, getting customers. And it seems that this one guy, um, I'm losing the page just to find out what this person does. Um, I think he is from the States, but which part of the States? 
But anywho, uh, he says that because of ponies, a lot of customer came in and just buy books from him. So that's amazing. Yeah, this is actually a news that I consider close to my heart. Cause when I was studying overseas in in Australia, Adelaide, mm-hmm. the the pony comics are the main reason why I even visited the comic shop in the first place. Because mm-hmm. yeah, and I'm one of those who not it's not just the uh, comics, books in general. I prefer having a physical copy than a digital copy. The the idea of you know flipping the pages, that and when it comes to the pony comics themselves, I always hold out hope that one day I will meet the artist and have them sign. You can't, can't ask the artist to sign a digital copy. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, and I, I'm, and I'm lucky enough to get my books signed by Andy Price and Head Breckle. I just need to get. Um, Haiti Cook's sign to complete the trifecta. <laughs> but still, that's another story for another day. But yeah, yeah, it seems that because of that, a lot of stores who are raking in the Pony comics are doing well. And to be honest, it's not 100% true or it's not a 100% done deal. Uh, bring in Pony comics, customer comes in. No, no, not really. It's just that the idea here is that people are enjoying the books they're easy to pick up and read versus from your marvel comics and whatnot they're kind of difficult to pick up and read because you got no idea what's going on from one chapter to another yeah you need a really deep background in the story before you can even just take a copy of the Marvel or DC comic and start reading. It's like, you need to do your homework and, no, I am not doing my homework for my comics. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And it's not even that too. It's like, I'm a new reader. I seen, what, um, Thor? Yes, I seen Thor in theaters and I'm interested in reading a Thor comic. Pick up comic book and scratch hit at what's going on because what is this? I don't understand at all. And, well, with the Pony comics, they're kind of easy. Um, depending on which issue you pick up, it's usually pick up, read, and that's it. There's no continuation from one book to another. In parentheses, there are, but I'm not going to argue with that. You, you just, in fact, that's, uh, that's what I mean by have to do. I mean, the, the only, for me, the only homework I need to do before picking up a Pony comic is I just need to know the characters. I just need to know who the main six are and some of the major players like Discord, the princesses, and I'm done. I don't need to know too much about them. Yep, true, true. Like, even Celestia and Luna are not that important in the comics. Like, if they appear, oh, who are these people? Oh, I can just go wiki it and, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they do have their own issues though, Celestia. I mean, there's, I think there's one or two, one or two one or issues where Celestia is the main focus and then one or two more where Luna is the main focus. Yeah, but usually in those comics, the, the way that they tell the story is pretty interesting. They'll always have a quick blurb about who they are and what they do. And for regulars like us, oh yeah, come on, let's, let's carry on, let's carry on. I, I know this already. Let's go into the story. But for people who do not know who they are and what they do, it's a nice quick blurb read. Like, ah, oh, I see. That's interesting. Okay. Let's see how the story goes. But yeah, um, Pony Comics are helping this guy and yay, that's awesome. I, I, I wish some other stores do that too. Since we are on the subject, do we actually have any comic stores here in Malaysia that sell pony comics? In all honesty, I'm in the south, so I got no idea in my current location. Uh, I don't know any store that does bring in comics, but in your neck of the woods, uh, in the central or in the capital, there's a few stores. Uh, most of them are quote-unquote kind of Uber, ghetto, not really ghetto, um, they're like hidden, like if you do not know the comic book scene, you do not know. And also there's Kinokuniya, which does bring a lot of comic books. And yeah, Pony Comics are not the forefront of bestsellers over there. Oh, the only ones I found are the Omnibus. You do, I haven't found any of the single issues yet, so yeah. Yeah, the single issues are kind of hard to bring in just because of how, how do I put this? Uh, they're hard because 
it's one of those things where not many people are going to read them. If they just pick an omnibus, it's a compilation, a trade back, it's simpler. You They can just bring in a few in and then if it doesn't sell, one day it will be sold. Like somebody will just pick it up because it's a full collection. So yeah, it's the option is there. But they don't even have every single omnibus, which frustrates me. I mean, like, okay, I have this one already. Where are the ones I don't have? And I'm not even talking about new because I mean, for the comics, I'm... What's the word? You're looking you know, for collecting? I don't know. It's like, you know, like say, say for example, the latest issue is 100 and I'm only at 50. Uh, um, yeah, so... You know, I'm not up to date, so I'm looking for issues that should have been out for quite a while and they're still not out there yet, so yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how to deal with that one. Like, honestly, in my case scenario here, I knew that I wasn't going to get more comics, so I opted for Comicsology, which is an online uh, comic book shop. So anywho, let's head on to something more sillier. Pony jewelry. What? <laughs> Actually, when I first saw the news, I expected sillier. Then when I saw the so-called, when I saw the actual jewelry in question, I realized, okay, it's not as silly as I expected. True, but at the same time, too, it's, what? <laughs> no, cause you see, when I first just read the headlines, I haven't looked at the actual jewelry yet, I just saw the headline, Lehman Jewelers at the pony section. You know what is the what's the jewelry I was thinking in my head? What? Like a pure silver sculpture or gold sculpture of the pony characters oh. because it because it and you know why I had this impression? Mm-hmm. Why? You know Godzilla? Uh oh! Don't tell me there's a silver statue of Godzilla. No, it's not silver, gold. Oh God! A solid gold statue of Godzilla, and, and it's it's because of this, and I, that's what made me think: is this is is this shop introducing silver sculpture or ponies? Nah, uh, it's more usable. It's more usable. But yeah, from what that's I, why I, that's why I said when I saw the jewelry, okay, it's not as silly as I thought. Okay, but from what I'm seeing here is that. Uh, they're carrying in pendants, studded earrings, charms, and so on. And that's pretty cool. I do like it. Uh, some of the prices are confusing because, um, for a pendant, it's about $50. A studded earring is 40 And there's this one item, My Little Pony Twilight Sparkle Earring at seventeen fifty. What? I don't know, but the, the seventeen fifty one. I laugh at the expression they, they, they chose for that. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, but still, uh, all of the items here are at 50% off. So if you're interested in getting it, I guess yes, go ahead. And yeah, if you take a look, see why it's funny. Uh, Tyler doesn't have her back main. So that's another reason why. I think that's because of the discount is a reject, probably. Maybe. Yep. They, for Rainbow Dash, they all use the same expression. It's only for Twilight, there's a second expression. Uh, that's why I said, and that's why it's 1750, because it's a reject. <laughs> uh, but talking about Rainbow Dash, right? Mm-hmm. Seems that Walmart has a sofa now. Like a Rainbow Dash sofa. <laughs> Talk about being 20% cooler. I don't know. In this sense, I would assume it would be 20% warmer because when I sit in a sofa, I would rather be warm than cold. Yeah, yeah, true. And the best thing is, it's $15. So, yeah, you don't need you don't need to spend the extra 5 <laughs> yeah, Although, from what I see in the comment section, apparently this sofa is kid size. Adults are too big to sit on it. <laughs> Oh man, right, darn, like that's gonna stop me. <laughs> Although I, I have to think is like, why? The first thing, the first thing in my head when I saw the picture is, why do, are, do the kids want a pair of eyes staring at their back? I don't know, I mean, the, the whole reason with, uh, merchandising is, why do it? Because of money. And, 
what makes money? Ponies. Now let's put ponies onto everything. <laughs> yeah, but after I get past the why part, the second question that comes to my mind is, why only Rainbow Dash? Yeah, that we know of. That we know of. I don't know if if we are getting others. I I think Equestria Daily would have received news already, but yeah. Probably, but yeah, who knows? Like it's not up yet, so we'll have to wait. But it's interesting. Uh, it's cerulean blue. It's okay. It's you know what? It's something that I won't buy just because it won't fit my living room style. So yeah, I ain't gonna get it. But hey, uh, it's something for Rainbow Dash fans out there. Ooh. And with that, that goes the news for this week. So, Charles, you've been... Oh, sorry. Charles, you're new here, right? So, what did you do, man? Like, what did you do in terms of the fandom? I take pictures. You know how people make fan art, make comic strips of the pony characters? Mm-hmm. When I look at the comic strips and I see the if they are simple enough to be replicated with my... With my plushies, I'll try to basically adapt them in photo form. Ah, I think I've seen those before. Yes, yes, yes. It's like a real world adaptation with plush or figures. Yes. And sometimes I just, just take pictures of my plushies. Like, I, they are my model. I'm their photographer. Just take random pictures. Like, for example, what I plan is I'm just gonna go to one of those five ringgit shops, get a, Santa Claus hat and put the, put them on my plushies, then take pictures for my Christmas yeah, photos. Yeah, yeah, that that's good. That's good. So uh, it's something similar to one of our guests before, um, Julie the Dragon, or you guys you might know him as Eric. Yeah, he's been doing the whole Tumblr blog. Uh, I think it's called uh, Traveling Twilight or something like that. I, I don't really remember, but he's been doing something like that. But in his case scenario, it's. Uh, twilight traveling from places to places and meeting cool people. Ah, oh, I, yeah, I think, you know, because that is a blog like that that inspired me to do the same thing. I have a small Twilight plastic figurine that I take around to places and just take pictures of them. Ah, that's cool. That's one thing that people or, well, anybody who is interested should do because it's simple enough to do on your own, but if you're done right, it's very interesting to do. And Equestria Daily, each year they ask for pictures, picture submissions of those kind of ponies at places. So, and I have submitted five this year and all five of them are accepted. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I remember that. Like Equestria Daily done that before and that is cool. Let's head on into the next topic. And said topic is what have we been doing with our week? So Charles, what have you been doing with your week, man? This week... Well, just working, and yeah, this week nothing, nothing really interesting this week. Just working, trying out, uh, trying out and failing this Nano Remo. Have you heard of it, Nano Remo? Yes, it's the writing competition where you write nonstop. No, it's not a competition. It's just a. It says Nano Remo stands for National Novel Writing Month, and there is no competition. The idea is that everybody can write. And so for one month, you try to, you aim to write a novel, re- disregarding quality, uh, the idea is to encourage people, you can write, you just need something, you just need a starting point. Uh, and I have seen that Equestria Daily is doing the same thing too. And I think it's mostly encouraging people on writing and giving them topics and whatnot because I think, um, if we were to see for this week or today's topic, uh, there are nano remote Thing would be uh, still looking through the thing. Um, where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Where is okay? Yeah, uh, this real secret of now. <laughs> okay, uh, there's some kind of topic there, but yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, it, some of the rules they, the the non remote organizers gave us are quite funny. Like you know how sometimes we get writer's block or we get stuck when we try to write something mm-hmm. or we do some part of the project we get stuck. Yeah. One of one of their advices when stuck. At ninjas. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, automatically, automatically, automatically it'll become a different kind of story. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I failed to reach the word count, but 
it's still productive in the sense that I realize what my biggest problem when it comes to writing is. So it's not a complete failure mm-hmm. on my part. Yeah, and with all this writing, you can always write a fanfic and put it up on film fiction. I have a fanfic, but that was written when I was in some sort of a phase. So, uh, what kind of phase was this? I feel like crossover, putting things that should that in crossover, uh... unrelated things in crossover into crossovers. Like, uh, do you know about this Japanese show called Garo? Ah, yeah, I remember them. Yeah, yeah. It's basically a a darker version of Kamen Rider. Yeah. Huh? When I was in that place, I actually tried to make a My Little Pony Garo crossover and... Did it work? Yeah. I don't know. I got into two chapters and life just stopped me from writing. So, But then now, when I think back at it, I just go, what was <laughs> I thinking when I wrote that? Uh, it's okay, man. Like, I've seen some crazy crossovers on filmfic. Like, the one that I I was following was Warhammer 40k crossover with My Little Pony. <laughs> I can't even imagine that. Yeah, and this one right now, I'm looking at the front page, and that's what? Um, My Little Pony crossover with Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, there is another My Little Pony writing project that I'm hoping to pursue. This uh, this idea actually comes from a, a friend, mm-hmm. and that's uh, poetry. Ah. And I actually, I had this idea that for each episode, I will write a poem or haiku for it. Mm -hmm. And I actually managed to write so far only one haiku, but that's the haiku for the first two episodes. Ah. Yes, would you like to hear it? Oh, you sure, why not? Welcome the main six. Harmony defeats nightmare. Adventures begin. Hmm, not bad. Then I that. Because I'm also planning to rewatch the series, you know, hiatus and whatnot. So I was thinking maybe after each episode, I try to write something. Ah, that, that's something fun to do. That will give you some practice before season eight comes out, and you can do your magic with season eight too. And that'll be interesting. Yeah, well, at the same time, I just need to get over because some, you know, how some people say sometimes the biggest critic is yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I have to get over my own criticism or my own writing, so, yeah. Yeah, and talking about writing, if I'm not mistaken, when we met at SiponyCon, you said that you started work or started internship in a journalism company, or what was it again? Um, as a online online publication. Ah, yes, an online publication. Like, uh, basically, it's your... Uh, I'm trying to think for an American term, like... Um, Online magazine, just yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let us just use the term online magazine. I'm trying to remember what online magazine I know from the States, but I don't <laughs> because I don't read them that much. But yes, um, online magazine kind of deal, yes. Yeah, this magazine, we talk about the, the local art scene. So it could be music art, writing art, performance art. And so for my first article in that, I wrote about the Sea Pony Orchestra because music is art. True, 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 true. And how did that went through? Like, did the, your editors and your readers like it? Uh, my editor published it, so that's a plus. <laughs> Yay! That's good, because editor says it's good for publication. <laughs> but how did that fare? Was it a lot of views? Did it a lot of comment feedback and whatnot? Uh, we got one or two positive feedback, so that's good. Ah, that's but good. Yeah, that, was, that was my first... My first writing, so my qual- writing quality is not as good as I as mine right now. So, yeah, I like to think I've improved since then. Ah, cool, 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 cool. And well, hope you do well, man. Like hearing this, like hearing you uh, pursuing something that is really cool, is awesome. Like one day you'll be invited to some artsy, fancy place to review or just to do something. Who knows, maybe another movie thingy that you can review too? So, yay! Maybe, maybe. Or maybe the local bronies got big enough to warrant mainstream media attention. Then I would just, alright, which one of you wants wants me to interview you? (laughs) And then everybody raises their hands. And I just go, 
wow, my two months, the articles I need to submit in two months can all be settled right now. <laughs> yeah, but I have to pick the quality over quantity. <laughs> I just say that if I have enough, if I will take the quantity first, then I go through the quantity to pick the quality ones. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. There's another way to do it too, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, that's about it. Nothing else then? Eh? Nothing else for now. So anywho, up with me. Um, Let's see. In all honesty, my week has been pretty slow. Um, I didn't really do anything noteworthy to warrant a full discussion. But I did play Final Fantasy X Remake on the consoles. And... I, I don't know, I, I think I'm enjoying the game. <laughs> oh no. The story is not that great. After replaying it a bit, or playing a bit of it, I can tell that the story is interesting. The main characters are dumb. The leveling up system is interesting too, but other than that, yeah, it's just okay. It's nothing noteworthy. Oh, and now I remember something else. Um, I watched Coco in theaters. Really, really enjoyed it. Like, Disney Pixar really outdid themselves with this one. And whoever has not watched it here, I would suggest go watch it because it's really good. Very, very good. Oh, you seen it too? Yeah. When? Today? I say? No, uh, last week. Oh, yeah, I remember you mentioned something about wanting to watch Thor but watching Coco instead, yes. Yeah. No, not Thor, Justice League. Ah, I was yes. going to watch Justice League, then I saw the poster for Coco, I, did, I switched to Coco. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, good choice? <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, I'm, I'm glad I switched to Coco because I did not know about that Frozen short that will be aired before uh, yes. the movie, so... Yeah, good for me. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I, I remember something about that and... Uh, a friend of mine told me that they were going to remove it from the Spanish release. I think it was in Mexico or something like that. Uh, who knows? Yeah, it, I have read about that. A few of them have already removed it because they are... Well, the word that I got in my head, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say it or not. If Sweetie Bot doesn't agree, she'll just dip it out. Pissed. Ah, yes, angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're angry because something to do with the movie is about their culture and they have to wait for 20 minutes to get into the main movie, so they really don't like that. If you think about it, right, it does make sense. So I I really can't blame them because this is a, well, quote-unquote the second time a movie has portrayed their culture, portrayed their, their culture, I cannot say that word, has portrayed their, their culture. Uh-huh. So... They want to get into it and judge it that way and see how it fares. And all honesty, like Frozen, people do enjoy. Some people hate it. It depends. So, eh, can't. Yeah, it, it takes it. It takes too long away from the main attraction. Yeah, usually, uh, Disney Pixar shorts. Uh, they're really really short. Like they're what ten minutes. Like like music video. Like yeah yeah. The, the last the last short I remember was the Lava Song. The Lava Song? Which, happy, what, which movie was that again? Uh, before Inside Out, there's oh. this song about singing a uh, singing volcano. Oh, I haven't watched Inside Out, but yeah. Ah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems that way. Like, I remember the one with uh, the papers. Like, what was that? Like, two couples meeting together because of paper? I, I don't know. Oh, that I haven't watched. Maybe it's Disney one, but I don't know. But it's still man, man, it's short. They're short. That's yeah. that's the main thing. And the frozen one takes up like twenty minutes. Yeah. So too long for some. True that. And in all honesty, when I went to the theaters for my movie, I kind of missed the first few minutes of the movie. I think I missed the whole setup of how Grandma Coco got dumped or something like that. But uh, still, no. He, he was Grandma Coco's mother who yeah, got yes. dumb. Yeah, but see, are we not able to even talk about this spoiler? Uh, it's just really this is initially the very beginning of the movie when you just got in or just sit down and watch because I missed the initial intro part because I came in a bit late. 
and I have to thank Frozen because <laughs> I miss Frozen, but I got a bit of the intro, but well, you know, whatever. Mm. So yeah, uh, people who have not watched Coco, go ahead, watch it. It's a really good show. I recommend it. Uh, I say that this movie put me into tears, tears of joy. Yes. Pixar does that. Pixar does that to all of us. Yes. If you think about it, we cry at toys. We cry at fish. We cry at the flying house. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Flying house. And we then... cry at a robot, a trash compacting robot. Yeah. 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 Uh, Monsters behind our closet. Yeah, yeah, that too, yeah, that too. Uh, and then now we cry at skeletons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but still, um, this movie is awesome, so you should go watch. But, anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. My Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And... Charles, where can the good people find you? You can just find me on Facebook. I'll just put it in the link below for the show notes. Yes. Yep. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvalive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also do subscribe to our newest endeavor. Then we should review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll get me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and Guest of the Week talking about the Pony episode comics and also movies. And sometimes we like to talk about other things than ponies. Like, for example, Batman. That was one of the topics that we like to watch. The ninja one? Not yet. I need to watch that one. Is it out? No, it, we only saw the trailer. Yeah, I saw that one. Like That was cool with the Chinese art style. That was cool. Japanese. Really? I thought it was in China that they did that no, it was uh, it was called Batman Ninja. Hmm. Although, if you ask me when I see the trailer, I just go, he looks more like a samurai than a ninja. True. Well, I can't wait to see that one. And who knows, maybe we'll talk about that one in the future too. So, yay! Yep. And also, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcasts early, and also you get full access to digital contents and exclusive. And also, huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Nemjokatorius, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, and also newest Patreon supporter, Mark. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. You have been really amazing. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Charles. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the show. See ya. Good night.